So about eight months ago, Motorola launched its third iteration of its flagship smartwatch, and the reviews were middling at best. People loved the premium looks and the new top-end specs, but it fell flat the moment it got out of the block because of one major flaw. The company and its bean counters, for some reason, saw it fit to price this thing at, get this, $350. That's a lot of money. So people's natural reaction was like, um, no thanks, Motorola will pass. And yeah, we have options guys, so maybe next time. So, which brings us to today, the present day, I wanted to revisit this very same device, the third version of Motorola's Moto 360. Why? Because now it costs just $199. Yes, you heard that right. At 350 bucks, I could admire this from far off in the sidelines, but now at this lower price, I wanted to see if this watch is that special and worth your time, pun intended, and your hard-earned cash. So let's find out after these messages. Let's get it. Whoosh. So I know I just said that the watch is special. Well, I also want to add the packaging as well as almost everything that came in the box into the equation. For example, I really dig the round box. It's just different from the rest of your rectangular square ones. And especially when you get this for the first time and you're super excited to get into this, a round shape is just so much easier to grip and just twist open like this. So great thinking on Motorola's part, great ergonomics and great first impression. And inside the box, you find a watch of course and two sets of interchangeable straps and one charger as well. And we'll talk about this in a second. Now the leather strap itself is genuine leather guys and is really supple, is really nice, especially in this color and it smells really good as well. And like all things leather, this, thing's, this thing needs a wear-in period, by the way, so it gives the adjustment holes and the strap itself to stretch out. Some reviewers have said and complained that this is stiff, but you just need to give it more time. It has a really nice stainless steel buckle assembly here, one free loop and one stationary one to keep your strap in place. I worn this with my long sleeve shirt and it totally stayed in place pretty well enough. The silicone version is nice too guys, the top side has this like sand dune like pattern and I really like the smooth scalloping on the undersides here that don't collect dirt and scum as easily as other designs which is really a nice touch. I don't know if Motorola did this on purpose but it's a nice side effect of their design language right here. There's a single loop here as well as a locking nub in here to keep it from sliding around especially if with your once it's together with your other strap. It's really effective. The buckle is stainless steel as well, just like the leather one. And in case you forgot what watch you have, there are three reminders for you. A Motorola 360 logo there, a Motorola logo right there, and another one stamped here on the strap. Both of them have these, both these straps have them, just in case you need a reminder. So here is the magnetic charging dock. It's proprietary, it's USB powered, it's mostly made of plastic, it has a, some high friction rubber right here, it's mostly hollow, but it looks good and it feels good. There are two charging pins at the top here. Uh, the magnetic draw is also nice and strong. The magnets are in the watch, but when you get these really close, the attraction is really nice and positive, which is what you wanna get in a charging dock. So you don't wanna be fiddling around with it. Now, there are a couple of cool things that I really like about this dock that makes it special as well, just like the watch. Here's a cable router at the back, and say if you want to rest this on the table, this keeps the uh, cable neat and tidy and out of the way. But the reason why they give you an option to have this flopping around back here is because this dock acts as a stand for your watch when it's charging. Say at night when you have this charging and you want to use this as a night watch for a night alarm clock, for example, you can rest your watch on this surface or your dock on this surface and it'll act as a stand, which is really cool. And the watch screen also rotates orientation to match. That's so cool. So here is the Moto 360 watch up close guys and you might not agree but I think it's beautiful and it's a well designed piece made to look like it was handcrafted in Switzerland or someplace. It runs Wear OS with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 3100 chip running the show and it's supported by a solid 1 gig of RAM and 8 gigabytes of internal storage. These numbers are pretty much norm nowadays although I personally think that the RAM itself is the more deciding factor here. Instead of your usual IP rating, the 360 is rated at 3 ATM water resistance or around um, 45 PSI of water pressure. So don't go swimming in this, hand washing showers are fine. The screen is a really nice 1.2 inch OLED display rocking 390 by 390 resolution with an average amount of nits except under strong or direct sunlight then it's pretty much crap. 
It sits flush with the bezel as you can see and it's covered with Gorilla Glass 3. Motorola boasts two days of battery life but realistically I got more like one to one and a quarter of a day which really is in line with most Wear OS watches anyway. And to complete the hardware package there's heart rate monitoring, there's GPS and NFC for mobile payments like Google Pay. Now I hate to sound like a broken record guys but I think the Moto 360 is one of the handsomest smartwatches out there. It's really really nice. Now the body itself is made of stainless steel and I, it seems like it's harder and denser than say the ones on the TicWatch Pro because scratches have not shown up at all during my time of testing. I've gone kayaking, hiking, working outdoors and there's not a single lick or scratch or tarnish on it which is really good news. Now on the back side there is a plastic cover here which is also nice because unlike the metal ones on the TicWatch those things scratch really easily so this will last quite a bit longer. Now the watch itself is 42 millimeters in diameter and 11.7 millimeters thick which is thinner actually than the smartwatches like uh, recent smartwatches like the TicWatch Pro and also say my daily driver the Mazefit Verge. Now you control the device via uh, three different combinations which is the screen and also two buttons. Here's the main control crown which you can bring up apps um, and also do more importantly scroll and here's the second button which is customizable to launch apps also or other actions. Between the two buttons is the microphone port and there is no speaker or speakers by the way guys so in case you're wondering. Now at a 12 o'clock position is the barometric sensor port as well and over on the back is the charging pins as well as the heart sensor array right there. The array protrudes about half a millimeter away from the body. It creates a sizable imprint on my wrist but it does not hurt or irritate one bit which is nice. So that basically means the 360 spreads its weight out really well so I can wear this pretty much all day without a problem. Now the bottom cover has an interesting radial motif to it which is duplicated in the main control stem right here you can see that as well as the charging dock which is a really nice touch. And by the way guys I noticed a few places on this watch that will definitely trap dirt, lint and grime and all that kind of stuff that will make your watch gross unless you clean it out pretty frequently. Like right here between where the sensor array mates with the case there is a, a little gap right there where after a while it just looks gross and the dirt just you know shows up really well and I use a q-tip to clean that one. Likewise with the mount, the screws right here they gather a lot of dust and dirt. And also where the bezel mates with the uh, the case right here I'm not sure if you can see that. There's this little gap where lint and dust and all that kind of stuff do gather so I just use a brush and just brush it off and it works really well. So guys have you heard that I've been trying to get to 5,000 subs and did you hear that we're already more than halfway there? And if you haven't already please consider showing your support by clicking subscribe down below and turning on the bell notification icon to get notified when new videos come out each Friday. Thank you in advance for your help guys. Thank you for your support. Back to the program and get me to 5,000. All right, let's talk about some positives and the look itself just gives me the feels guys in a good way too. If there's one word to describe the Moto 360, it would be the word special. The stainless steel body is so unique. I'm not sure how they made it, whether they turned it or milled it, molded it or caressed it into shape. It reflects light so well and so nicely and it also oozes premium build quality without being too gaudy. The straps are good, the accessories are also interesting. Everything about this whole set is special. The second positive thing is no doubt that lower price. $199 guys is such a far cry from the original $350 which makes the Moto 360 that much more attractive to the average buyer or should at least. And if you're not moved by this, you probably should check yourself into the closest psych ward for the lack of common sense. And finally we have the processor and RAM combo. In this case we have the Snapdragon 3100 chip paired with 1GB of RAM so it prevents it from being sluggish. Case in point, on the negative side we have the Misfit Vapor X. As some of you may know and many of you owners can testify, this has the same Snapdragon chip, the 3100, but has half the RAM, 512 megabytes. And what did you get? It's as slow as molasses in July. But on the other hand, we have the TicWatch Pro that has the 2100 Snapdragon, but one gigabytes of RAM and what do we have? Smooth as butter. So in this case, we have best of both worlds. And now for the negatives. So I know some of you don't mind charging your devices on a daily basis at the end of the day so that's your routine and that's fine and all. But I don't like personally the chore of having to worry and have range anxiety of wearing my watch past a day. This Moto 360 only lasts a day or day and a quarter before it dies. And being outdoors, if I'm away from my charger or anything like that, 
I worry a lot. It'd be nice to have battery life like say the Amazfit Verge right here that can last five days. So Motorola, listen up and give me longer battery life next time, please. Still though, I think crappy battery life in Wear OS devices in general stems from one single problem and you probably can guess it, it's Wear OS itself. So this leads me into my next negative. And yes, Google is very well aware that Wear OS is the black sheep of the family because they haven't reasonably supported it in a long time. And they probably wish it would just go away just like that. But as it is, it's poor optimization and unnecessary background processes, especially on the Moto 360 and all Wear OS watches is really unnecessary. This is not an Android phone for crying out loud. It's just a bloody watch. So it drains down the battery really quickly. Am I ranting there? Yes, I am. My last negative has to do with button placement on the right side of the body, and in particular, the crown that handles scrolling. The Moto 360 and so many other watches do this. So if you wear this on your left wrist, it's totally fine. You reach over with your right hand and you can do all the rotating. Now, if you wear your watch on your right hand, you have to reach over with your left hand to do the scrolling, which means from time to time, your screen will be obscured by your wrist or your finger. So it's not ergonomic. A great solution to this would be some kind of rotating bezel to solve all these left wrist, right wrist mishmash. Well guys, to summarize, I think you'd be wise to put the Moto 360 near the top of your shopping list. It's a beast of a timepiece with so many things going for it, like fantastic build quality, amazing industrial design, Google Assistant, Google Apps, solid GPS, NFC, and probably more importantly is that the 360 is finally, finally a solid proposition unhindered by a lofty, stupid price point. The only thing I think that hampers it for some people is the lack of phone call abilities and LTE connectivity. And at least for me personally is I wish it had stronger battery life. And of course, there's the Snapdragon 4100 chip looming over the horizon. And I'm not sure when watches with that chip are coming, but they're definitely coming. But that being said, I want to give the Moto 360 a gear up score of 93.4, a solid A. This so gets a thumbs up. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you come back next Friday for a new one. I promise you'll be good. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel because let's face it, Gear Up is that awesome. And another side effect of that is it helps me get you more videos like this to watch. So win-win situation. Also visit my Patreon page down below where you can buy me a cup of coffee or tea or something like that, whatever you like to do. And also remember the thumbs up if you like this video. Yes. And comments nicely down below. And thumbs down. Hmm. Thumbs down to duty-free shops. Yes, I have a beef with you duty-free shops because I think you're the biggest scam on the planet. I'm planning to buy like Hawaiian chocolates, a box of Hawaiian chocolates on Amazon is like 25 bucks. At the airport, it's like $56,000. More is that. And speaking of airports, I think all airport businesses are also scams because if I go to Subway and get a sandwich a foot long, it costs me 1300 bucks and I don't even get a drink. So that's ridiculous. So anyway, thumbs down to duty free shops and airline businesses, airport businesses, thumbs down. Anyways, that's all I got guys. I really appreciate y'all and I love y'all so much. Remember to take care of yourself and do something loving and kind for somebody this week because all good things start with you. I'll see you next week guys. Peace out and God bless.